I had better preface this whole thing with saying that I love Rich Roll. He is a brilliant man with whom I have much in common. His podcast has been a great influence on me over these last couple years, and I have thoroughly enjoyed countless episodes. Because I myself have healed from a 15-year spell of chronic back pain, with the insights passed down from folks like Dr. Sarno, Steve Ozanich, and Dr. Howard Schubiner, there is no fucking way I'm letting this bit of conversation pass by unclarified. It is a perfect illumination of many of the common misconceptions that lead people to prematurely write off Sarno and the very information that could allow them to transcend their pain. After the talk, I will shed the light of experience on this conversation, as well as share the wisdom I have gleaned in living these concepts. Satya, Mind, Body, Spirit, Health, and Healing. Do you run every single day? No, I've got like lower back issues right now, so I'm actually benched from running at the moment, doing all these weird exercises to try to alleviate my back pain mm. but i might be looking at surgery so i'm a little hampered which is red goldstein you know that actor from um from ted lasso who plays uh mm. you know the tough uh roy kent uh-huh do you watch that show a little bit uh, hey. i'm like one of the few people that hasn't like gone an, deep on, I on an ted lasso <laughs> I'm, I'm invested because I, I know I, I know but anyway um, the famous biscuit episode yes yeah he I, I I I have lower back issues too and I saw him at a party and he goes I want you to read this book uh he goes I'm someone who's had back surgery and I'm going to send you a book I want you to get this book it, uh-huh he goes it's all in your mind yeah have the Sarno book? book yeah yeah the and Sarno did book did you read it I've got a great story about it but finish your thought but anyway I'm like I'm literally at this at this get together with a fucking back brace on mm-hmm and he hugs me and he feels it and he goes i've had surgery i've i've gone down the wormhole and you're going to you're going to roll your eyes at me but you should read this book so i haven't read the book yet but i ordered the book yeah so it's it's by this guy i believe it's paul sarno and sarno it's some, is i definitely can't remember the title but it's something like uh, you know healing back pain and the thesis of this book is essentially that uh, most not all back pain but certain types of back pain Uh, are really the result of un- unhealed emotional trauma. Mm. And if you go into that and heal that, you will release whatever it is that's causing you that pain. I believe the hypothesis. It is a good hypothesis. I think there's truth in that and and that book has been recommended to me so many times by so many people over the years and I consistently resisted it. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you don't understand. You know, you don't understand. This is real and I've got MRIs and like the whole thing. I've tried all these alternative modalities and then I was at a birthday party maybe 6 months ago and uh talking to um a PT person and a breathwork person who and they're like we can help you and like we're having this back and then and then up walks Toby McGuire <laughs> and he's like are you talking about back pain and then he tells his story of back pain and he refers this book right and i was like okay i've been referred this book a million times but and now i've Spider-Man. never been referred by this book by like an a list you know after literally like, spiderman is this a, is this the voice of god and i was like all right i'm going to get this book and i i like downloaded it on audible and i went on a long bike ride and i listened to the whole thing and i was like okay it's in my mind and then the next day i like went out and went running um and kind of pushed myself a little bit more than I should have and I thought well I'm not hurting myself because it's all in my mind right and then my back seized up and I was like in bed for two days oh no <laughs> so well that yeah. that book might not be intended yeah. for like mega marathoners like you but for people like me who can point to yeah I have had a lot of emotional trauma and I also have a horrible back and neck maybe it's something to look at i don't know that the book's going to tell me how to fix it right. but uh, i can certainly i can i certainly have bouts of bad backs after a periods of of depression or periods of trauma uh so well, that's they, information right that's what? good information yeah it's good da- data i guess yeah you should read the book i'm going it's it is, my, it is a good book it's I, on my I kitchen like counter yeah so now i'm recommending it to you okay. <laughs> you know like i had a awkward experiment with it um anyway First and foremost, it is not all in your mind. Yes, the root cause lies within your mind, but it is also in your brain, nervous system, and the systems controlled by the autonomic nervous system. 
More broadly speaking, it is a phenomenon that is occurring within consciousness. It is also in your body. You can feel it, right? But let us remember that the body is the unconscious mind. And if you didn't have repressed emotions combined with a false belief system about structural abnormalities being the cause of your pain, your pain would cease to exist. If you would prefer a scientific explanation, who am I kidding? Of course you would. Then you need to understand the way neural circuits within your brain function to create pain and how this affects the autonomic nervous system. In the case of back pain, the autonomic nervous system controls blood flow and oxygen supply to nerves and muscles in the back, and when this is altered or reduced, it can create many different sensations of pain. If you would prefer to hear this from someone wearing the proverbial white coat, rather than the mystic often wearing nothing at all, then you need to check out the work of Dr. Howard Schubiner, the man carrying on Dr. Sarno's work and doing all the scientific research to back it. I continue to learn that hoping people will understand TMS only leads to frustration and is completely out of my control. At the end of the day, it has to do with a readiness and level of consciousness that seems to be solely in the hands of God. This reminds me of a time I was fresh and green to these insights and quite gung-ho about them. After all, I had been witnessing my long-time back pain disappear, even while I did everything I had ever been told not to do concerning my spine. A longtime friend and ceramics teacher at the school I worked at informed me that the doctors had told her she needed an epidural spinal injection. I told her that that treatment had made my back worse. She then continued on to say that the doctors had informed her that she may need surgery or was at risk of becoming paralyzed. Unfucking believable She was in her 30s. I loaded up a Sarno video on her phone and told her to watch it that night before she made any more decisions. That was the last we ever talked. She avoided me, and for reasons far beyond me, she resigned from her long-held position at the school shortly thereafter. That was a good first taste of the monumental resistance to these concepts. Let's face it, it's fucking terrifying. I loved that Larry David, the creator of Seinfeld, was mentioned in this podcast and would like to point out that he was a patient of Dr. Sarno, and in the documentary film about TMS entitled All the Rage, he said that his meeting with Dr. Sarno and the subsequent disappearance of his back pain was the closest thing he had ever had to a religious experience. Next, I'm going to share a very applicable passage from my mentor Steve Ozanich's book, The Great Pain Deception, to show you how Ritual's experience is not at all uncommon, nor is it evidence that Dr. Sarno was wrong. Much to the contrary, and as long as you think your pain disproves TMS, you are completely missing the point, and resistance is continuing to function exactly the way it intends to. Oh, and speaking of resistance, I heard from a very reliable source that Stephen Pressfield is a big fan of Steve Ozanich's work. Okay, check this out. The Watershed Event During this time of intense indecision, I heard a Nike commercial on the bedroom television. Just do it. It was an epiphany, a true light bulb moment. Those words resonated in my mind over and over and over that day sending a shockwave of sudden determination through me. What did I really have to lose by trying, Sarno? Was I really living now? I began to stand up. Agonizing pain ran down the front, back, and sides of my legs, but I didn't care anymore. I had nothing to lose. I decided then, it was all or nothing. The Nike commercial, and my Aussie friend, and my own will to persevere, all contributed to a move forward with the belief that my emotions were causing such intense pain, and that those damn disc bulges, and stenosis, and arthritis, and the plethora of medical labels were not causing my pain. Although my unfelt rage had taken me further down than at any time in 27 years, I could now see a road leading towards Recovery Highway. What a great slogan from Nike. Just do it has many connotations. Nike is the Greek goddess of victory. It reeks with the concept of jumping into life, of taking chances and pushing past doubt for life's sake. If I ever run into the person who came up with that slogan, I will buy him or her dinner. I will. I'll just do it. 
I decided to take that slogan to heart and not lie there and die, wallowing in self-pity. I was going to follow Dr. Sarno's advice to become more vigorous in my activity. I pulled myself up by the bootstraps, actually Nike shoelaces, once again and got dressed to run. I could hardly walk, but I was going to run around the neighborhood. I had trouble getting my running shoes on through the pain, but I did it. I hadn't jogged for 10 years, was weak, 45 pounds underweight, out of shape, and in the worst pain of my life. However, it's often desperation that is the motivation needed to prompt individuals to react and change. I knew I needed to begin, and that time was now. In The Republic, Plato had written, the beginning is the most important part of the work. Recovery from TMS begins with confidence in self and confidence in diagnosis. Confidence is also freedom, and freedom generates positive energy, the seeds of which grow from a single beginning. Running on empty. I dragged myself to the front door and with great courage opened the door and looked out and saw a new world. With my portable tape machine playing Dr. Sarno's voice in my headset, I made up my mind that I was going the entire mile around my neighborhood. It was two days all over again. Just like the old football days, it was time to get tough again. I started down my driveway and into the street in an attempt to make it around the entire neighborhood. It was one mile exactly around the hood. Given the fact that I hadn't even walked properly in months, I didn't know whether I could make it but I was determined. As I began to run, it was difficult, not only because my pain was so intense, but because I had trouble raising my foot because of drop foot. It must have been quite a sight to watch, too, but when a person is in deep suffering, he tends to care a little less about appearance, as ego pulls back from superego. It was a start in the proper direction. The road that I began to run on that day was the road to recovery. Thank heaven for Harvey Kennedy. I lumbered to the first corner of the block before I had to go down on all fours in pain, pretending to tie my shoe. With TMS, when the blood flow is cut off, it can feel like a bolt of lightning zigzagging down the leg and into the ankle or calf. It's no wonder that millions of people confuse the sensation of back pain with a nerve being pinched. After all, we have been erroneously inundated with the notion that herniated discs and stenosis are impinging nerves. If you combine that with the feeling of blood withdrawing, it's no wonder we are caught in a confusing dilemma. I kept rewinding the tape to the statement below, listening to Dr. Sarno as I ran. The idea that they, nerves, are being pinched is usually fantasy, and once again there is much ado about nothing. Johnny Sarno, MD, Healing Back Pain. I kept rewinding because it was that part that I doubted the most. I also kept rewinding the tape to the story he told of the now famous 30-year-old attorney from Healing Back Pain. The attorney ran through his pain and that same night he was awakened as his pain attempted a tactical quote-unquote breakout in another area of his middle back and then disappeared forever. I was hoping during the entire jog that that same thing would happen to me that night. It did not. In fact, it was another year or so before I eventually re-educated my brain and autonomic nervous system to react differently to movement, but I had begun full of it. There was something very important about to occur in my recovery following that painful jog, probably painful to watch too. As I ran, my focus on the pain was necessarily reduced. One much watched their step when running. One foot up, one foot down. Cars going by, wind blowing, dogs biting, bees stinging. These are a few of my favorite things. This is mindfulness. It must have been a 20 minute mile, but I was coming down the home stretch when I noticed that my pain was not as sharp as it had been when I started. I was striding normally, even though my foot was weak. My back seemed fairly loose and there was only a dull sensation of pain. I made it around the block and into my driveway and through the front door of my house when it happened. I closed the front door behind me and felt a sense of endorphic euphoria from the jog in a noticeably lowered level of pain. Then, as I walked into my family room, it hit me. I was fine one moment, and in a New York second, the blood began withdrawing so fast that I had to get on the floor as waves of intense spasms washed over me. I could actually feel the blood withdrawing in my low back. 
It withdrew so hard that it almost pulled my legs back behind me in severe cramping. The intensity was absolutely fantastic to experience. There was no reason for the pain to be that suddenly intense since seconds before I was standing tall and feeling relatively well. It was at that very moment that I knew Dr. Sarna was correct. It had been a distraction all along because it had overreacted. It was the watershed moment for me in my recovery. I was thrilled beyond explanation. I never looked back after that point. Thinking there were structural reasons for my pain was a thing of the past. In overplaying its hand, I realized that it was doing exactly what the good doctor had described. I had experienced a fundamental shift in consciousness. What I had been led to believe is true, I now knew was false. I now believe that the physical restrictions imposed by TMS are much more important than the pain, thus making it imperative that the patients gradually overcome them. If patients cannot do this, they are doomed to have recurrence of the pain. Johnny Sardo, MD, Healing Back Pain. My unconscious self didn't like the fact that I was attempting to become more active. I smiled through the agony. I knew that I had TMS now and that I was going to win the war. But would I win the peace by releasing my pain for good? It would still be a long road to recovery, but I now knew how to attack pain. I needed to become much more physical. There would be no more resting my back, or babying it, or therapy, or comfy pillows, or back braces, or special mattresses, or acupuncture, or manipulations, or anti-inflammatory drugs. As I said, I had hoped that I would be awakened that night like the 30-year-old attorney had been, and it would be all over. But it wasn't to be with me. It was still a long and bumpy road ahead, but that jog was the turning point. TMS had overplayed its hand. It did a dumb thing for its own self-survival. The jig was up. I was on to it. I had had an epiphany. My entire attitude had shifted. I thanked God that night for turning me towards a truer path, a deeper level of consciousness. Now I had both hope and direction. Hope without direction is like a Ferrari without fuel. It sure looks nice, but you can't go anywhere with it. I was now armed with the truth about pain and ready to begin attacking it and healing. Something else to consider is that maybe, just maybe, you don't really want to run at all. This reminds me of a friend of mine from the hot yoga studio I frequent, who attends the signature hot yoga class regularly. I often see him after his class has just finished, and the boot camp class I enjoy will be beginning shortly thereafter. I like to joke with him and say, I'll save a spot for you in there, to which he always immediately references a toe injury he suffered 12 years prior that prevents him from doing burpees. I chuckle, send him some love, and think to myself, dude, you just don't like doing burpees, and that is completely fucking okay. Not everybody needs to like burpees, and that is okay, but rather than just saying that, we let our bodies do the bailing out. In this same regard, I have found that though I have often loved running in my life, sometimes I would rather go for a walk, a hike, a bike ride, or climb the stairs at the gym. Who cares? My entire life has been a big lesson in slowing down. At some point, I came to see that maybe it was okay if I stopped running, both literally and figuratively. And if I want to run, then I will. And think about this, why on earth would biking be easier on your back than running? Running is a far more natural movement for human beings. We have been doing it for thousands of years. Bicycles have been around for a couple hundred years at most. This is just another example of something we accept as truth that is completely ridiculous. The situation discussed in this talk will likely follow a very predictable unfoldment, unless, that is, a greater level of consciousness and understanding steps in to save the day. I can reveal this set of events not because I am anything close to a fortune teller, but because I have observed this pattern play out so many times both in myself and others. The surgery at best will provide some temporary relief, not to mention a break from work and other life responsibilities. Then, because the best a surgery can do is provide a very convincing placebo effect, it will only be a matter of time before the pain returns either to the same spot, another area of the back, or another body part. 
Hip pain, knee pain, or even plantar fasciitis are just a few examples of where the pain could end up at next. The doctors will surely have some wonderful explanation for this too, but the bottom line is, is that pain is caused by repressed emotions, tension, and a false belief system about the body. Unfortunately, some of us may need something like a failed surgery before we are ready to accept that our pain is mind-body in origin. I can tell you from personal experience that coming out of a surgery to the immediate knowing that it has done nothing is not fun. Actually, it is fucking horrible and becomes another obstacle to healing in the future when you have to surrender to the fact that you have allowed this to happen and accrued more trauma in the process. This being said, we cannot be too hard on ourselves for something we do not yet know and understand. And even if something like an unnecessary surgery does take place, we can absolutely overcome this as well. The bottom line is this, until you can accept that it is a combination of your false belief systems about the body and repressed emotions causing your pain, you are destined to continue experiencing various forms of physical pain. If you are already on a healing path like Ritual so clearly is, all that will be necessary will be addressing your belief systems about the body, re-educating yourself, and deeply integrating this knowledge into the subconscious mind. Much love to everybody out there experiencing stuff like this, and a big thanks to Dr. Sarno and the handful of others out there working their asses off to get this message out into the world. Stay tuned because very soon I will be having Spider-Man himself on the channel to give us a brilliant teaching about TMS. Oh yeah, and if you haven't already seen Zach Braff's new movie called A Good Person, I would highly recommend it. Namaste. If you found this to be meaningful, please like, share, and subscribe to support and encourage future creations of this kind. And if you feel the guidance of someone who has been walking this path for some time would be helpful for you, I would love to work with you. I am now accepting bookings at howtosayfupolitely.com.